Hey everyone, today we're going to dive into one of the most crucial yet often overlooked parts of game development, the game design document or GDD. In this video, I will show you step by step how to create your game design document. Now there's many ways to structure your game design document, but they will always have the same key information in them. And don't worry, we're going to be referencing a sample GDD throughout this tutorial. I'm using a GDD for a hypothetical game called Acorn Quest. You can find the link to this sample document in the description below. So feel free to open it up and follow along. Let's break down a typical GDD section by section. If you're new to the channel, my name's Taken Grace, and I make Unreal Engine tutorials and game development videos like this. So if you want to improve your skills and join a community of amazing game developers, then subscribe to the channel and like the video. We're giving away a $50 gift card to the Fab Store this month, so stick around to find out how. But let's start working on the GDD. So the first part of your game design document is all about setting the stage. So this is your elevator pitch for the game. If you were stuck in an elevator for one minute with a potential investor for your game, how would you pitch it? Or maybe a simpler concept, if somebody mentioned that they were a gamer, imagine telling them about your game and how you would tell them in only a few sentences what your game is about. So first up, we have project title. This can be obviously the title of your project if you have one, uh, or if you have a couple of working uh, options, uh, just put TBD and then in brackets you can put, uh, like so we have Acorn Quest or Squirrel Rush or whatever the case is uh, for this game. It's based on whatever game you have here. Uh, the next up we have the genre. Uh, obviously this is going to define what your game's genre is and it's going to basically outline what the whole project is and kind of give a bit of a scope because uh, obviously a 2D platformer is not going to be the same as an RPG or it's not going to be the same as a um, action adventure or whatever the case is, right? They're going to be different. It's going to basically give you like an idea of what to expect if you're coming into this as either a team member or an investor. Uh, our document specifies the game as a 2D platformer and the main platform as a web or PC game. And listing the engine options is also helpful for developers because uh, if they want to work on your project, obviously if it's like, oh, it's in, you know, Unreal Engine or Unity or whatever, and if they're not familiar with that engine, maybe they wouldn't be a good fit for the team or whatever the case is. So it's just always good to write down what uh, kind of engine you guys are working on. All right, next up is the target audience. Uh, for our game design document, uh, we target casual players, young adults, and developers um, learning the engine. So critically, this everybody thinks that uh, the target audience is for everybody, uh, everybody that wants to play your game, but that's just not true. But yeah, audience is very important. You need to know what your demographic is for your game so you can make important decisions on it. Uh, I know you'd like to say it's for everybody, but that's generally not the case. There's different types of players, age, gender, culture, etc. will all play a factor into the design of your game. Next up is platform. What hardware will you be building your game for? PlayStation, uh, Xbox, uh, I, uh, maybe steer clear of them for a little bit. They're they're in a kind of a bad press, but uh, yeah, a Switch, I mean, they're uh, they're kind of making corporate greed look like a sport, so. Uh, I mean, PC is always safe, so I think uh, Acorn Quest, we're just gonna start simple and just do PC. Uh, next are your core goals for making a game. So for example, do you wanna create a fun, engaging game that's not filled with microtransactions, which pretty much is every indie developer ever. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, in Acorn Quest case, uh, we wanna create a simple, functional, single level prototype to demonstrate core platformer mechanics. In the game so that is our core goal for this what, what what is your personal goal for this project uh and if it's to make money it's uh i mean you can probably write something a little bit simpler like uh you know you want to uh become a full-time game developer so you're creating this uh, as kind of a stepping stone to uh, get your feet wet or something like that right so uh obviously you know the end goal is to make money off your game but uh you know you probably won't make money off your first game so just make something to learn the engine and do something fun and get it out there and get some feedback and learn some skills. Next, we have the concept summary. Uh, so this is kind of like that, you know, elevator pitch that uh, I was telling you about earlier. So this should just be like a couple of sentences long of like what your game's about. So the summary for Acorn Quest is a brief side-scrolling 2D platformer where players control Squeaky, a determined squirrel. The goal is to traverse a small forest level to collect 10 acorns, or golden acorns, pardon me, uh, before time runs out. So notice how that one paragraph immediately conveys the character, genre, and objective. Uh, it's perfect. It just outlines exactly what the game's about. Um, and uh, so yeah, you should look something like that. Your your summary should not be a page long. It should literally be like a couple of sentences. It doesn't have to be exactly, but like think like your game's on Steam in the description. Like how are you gonna sell this game to players to convince them to buy your game and play it, right? All right, next we're gonna move on to gameplay mechanics and the core loop, which is the overall experience for the player. So, so obviously the core loop is the, basically the repetitious action that the player is doing throughout the game in order to, you know, progress through the game, right? So uh, obviously like Ghost of Yotai, which I just played, it's, you know, explore, fight, uh, loot, upgrade, and liberate, basically. Like that's the gameplay loop for uh, Ghost of Yotai or Ghost of Tsushima. 
Um, so yeah, you want to think of like, what is, what is the ultimate goal that is happening in your game uh, that's going to be on repeat and how do we create that, right? So for Acorn Quest, uh, the loop simple, start level, explore and platform, collect, conflict, win and loss uh, conditions. So uh, when, uh, the win condition is particularly specific. So we collect all 10 acorns within the 90 second time limit. So this is focusing on a tight timer uh, and a collectible count that defines the entire feel of the game. So you can see we've listed all of the uh, core gameplay uh, items there, start level, explore platform, and then just a little bit of a description uh, for each one of those. So next up is the game mechanics. So obviously we're gonna list in detail uh, the specific systems uh, to make your game work. We only have a couple few key mechanics uh, in our project here for Squeaky the Squirrel. Uh, we have them as run and jump, uh, standard movement for platforming, and then we have head stomp, which is the only combat mechanic in this game. Uh, the GDD clearly states that it's used to briefly stun or defeat weaker enemies. Squeaky must land directly on top of the enemy. So this detail saves the animator from wasting time designing a punch or kick animation or whatever, right? So uh, for your guys' games, uh, obviously this could be pretty vast. Uh, you might have a lot of mechanics. You might have a complex health mechanic, uh, uh, you know, shop currency, all this kind of stuff. This is gonna be all the mechanics that are going into your game. Um, and essentially this is gonna be a checklist for you, right? As you're making your game, you're going to go to your game design document and check, you know, hey, how, what uh, do I need to make still, or have I made all this kind of stuff, right? So uh, number four, will enemies and collectibles, uh, even the enemy is documented simply. So uh, in our project, the slow snail has only one behavior. It moves slowly and linearly along a single platform. Its hazard is simple. Contact with the shell damages the player uh, or causes the loss of a collected acorn. And the documentation is concise and functional. So if you have other ideas for your game, uh, either like maybe you're out in the car one day and you just kind of randomly get an idea like I do sometimes, uh, I'll open my game design document and I'll add it to it. So and then I, you know, I can come back and I can implement that into the game and I can test it out and maybe it's not working how I thought or it's changing the feel of the game, uh, you know, for the worse. Uh, so that at that point you can remove them later. But generally you want to have your game design document kind of nailed down before you really start uh, working on it just so you have a kind of a clear idea of what's going on. So next up is the story, lore and level design. So setting the narrative and giving your mechanics meaning, this is critical for the level designer. Uh, it's good to have some sort of concept art in this section. Uh, it can be primitive rough sketches, uh, or you can ask like Google Gemini to draw you some concept art like I did for this document. But, but don't think that I mean to use AI art in your final game. Like leave the AI slot to the AAA professionals and you focus on making a good game. AI is a tool to help with your productivity, but it's not a replacement for actual art and artists. I mean, I can't remember what game it was, but they released like a, you know, a, an official art for a game and it was definitely created by AI because like one guy had three arms and some, I, I don't even remember the game. I, I think it was Pokemon to be honest, but I mean, are we surprised? Uh, <laughs> uh, so for Acorn Quest, uh, our world is the ancient oak grove. Uh, the structure is intentionally small, a short uh, single uh, horizontal scrolling level. So again, this keeps the scope in check. Uh, our level must feature the tiered platforms for jumping and bottomless pits for high stakes hazards. Uh, the designer knows exactly what elements they need to include. And uh, obviously like with our, you know, our image here, that's not the final level, but that's just to kind of give like a mood here. Uh, it's actually really good to include mood boards on your, uh, in your game design document as well. Like if you don't have a design for like a town or uh, you know, an area, uh, make a mood board, go on Google, uh, find, you know, say it's a castle environment, find a bunch of castle environments and then put them together, like make like a collage or whatever. Uh, that's called a mood board, if you don't know what that is. Uh, so yeah, it's, just put that in your game design document and then if you have somebody who's going to be doing some designing for you you can be like hey i want a castle environment here's the mood board and it's going to show them basically the kind of look that you're looking for and then they can go ahead and design something it also helps you if you're doing the designing i just kind of get your head around uh the kind of look you're going for and then maybe when you're drawing or designing something you can actually take mo um, some inspiration from the images in that mood board all right next up is story uh so even with a simple story the main character is defined so squeaky the squirrel whose role is a is the protagonist a small agile and resilient force squirrel uh, this informs the art style and the feel for the controls so obviously the, if you have more complex stories uh you're gonna want to maybe have an outline so yeah for an outline obviously just like the the absolute major strokes of your story um you know don't get into the nitty-gritty details um i would have probably in, in this game design document section i would probably have the um the outline of the actual story and then i would probably have a separate document that goes much more into depth of what your story is but the general strokes and general outline of the story and where the story is going to go i would have in your game design document um, yeah, because the story is always going to get refined. Um, so just, I, I personally would have that in a separate document. I don't know if you guys have made a um, game design document or whatever before, 
uh, if you're watching this, uh, how you guys have done it. So maybe let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, I, I personally would have it as a separate document because it's going to be always being changed and worked on and, and all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to have 90 pages of your game design document be your story, right? So I would have that something totally separate. All right, so we have art, audio, and technical. So uh, the final sections are all about what the player sees, hears, and what runs it all. So our, our game design document in uh, Acorn Quest clearly defines a visual language of low fidelity pixel art with a simple color palette of greens, browns, and blues. So this is a very specific direction for the artist. And uh, we also clearly have the UI stated, timer, acorn counter, uh, and score. So the programmer knows precisely what overlays they need to create. Uh, so you would also list all of your other UI screens like pause, start, game over, win, loss, results, screen, etc. Uh, just so everybody knows all the kind of things that, that are going into your game. So just remember that like this document, every if you have you know a team, right? Uh, all everyone's going to see this, and this is how you're going to keep everybody on the same page. So uh, it's really good to kind of be super detailed on what exactly we need, so nobody's wasting their time doing a bunch of stupid stuff, right? The soundscape is defined as, uh, by a simple, repeating, cheerful chip tune track. Uh, no complex orchestrated needed. So the sound effects are listed: jump sound, collect sound, stomp sound, death sound, etc. So uh, this is telling the sound designer exactly what the core sounds to prioritize and what mood to aim for. Uh, next week, I have a video coming out about the importance of sound in your game, along with a tutorial on how to create some great sounds in Unreal Engine. There's one more important section that you need in your GDD, uh, but first you should make sure that your document is in a safe place and away from prying eyes, just like your personal data should be. I used to get up to six robo and scam calls, plus 50 phishing and scam emails in my inbox every day. It got so bad that I had to change both my email and my phone number. And that's when I discovered Incogni. Incogni is a personal data removal service that scrubs your info from shady websites. Users can protect their privacy and remove their personal information from anywhere online, including online directories, people search sites, and even commercial databases. They can have all sorts of data on you that can be used for stealing your identity or harassing you with emails and phone calls. The process is fully automated for hundreds of known data brokers, companies that collect and sell your data without your consent, and data can reappear on these sites, so Incogni repeatedly removes it for you. Also use their custom removal feature to take down almost everything that's exposed about you online. Send them a link and a dedicated privacy expert will handle everything else. I mean, if I asked you for your social security number or any other private data, of course you're not going to tell me. So does that make it okay that these companies can take all the data about you and then resell it? No. I've personally used Incogni for two years and the robo and scam calls have basically stopped. I highly recommend them. Take back your personal data with Incogni. Click on the link in the description below and get 60% off the annual plans. All right, let's finish your game design document. You have all the basics you need for your game design document, but consider adding sections like game design pillars, uh, a table of contents for uh, large design docs. Uh, and you can expand on the world by adding levels, locations, more collectible stuff, uh, story and more, right? So uh, the information you have in this document uh, is easier to communicate your vision and idea to teammates, investors, and I mean, yourself, really. I mean, I forget lots of ideas and if they weren't written down, I mean, it's game over, right? So, all right, let's tell you how to win that $50 gift card to the Fab Store. Uh, if you're not subscribed and you made it this far, that means you're dedicated to learning game development and it would be awesome to have you join our community of awesome game devs. So subscribe to the channel, like and hype the video, and then join our Discord. You'll find the giveaway channel and then you have to roll up to the pinned comment and then you can click on the emoji uh, to enter the draw. If you wanted to learn about game design pillars, you can click on this video right here. If you're having trouble with a game system and want to request that I make it live on stream, I do a couple streams a month where I create systems requested by subscribers. Special thanks to my Coffee Royal members if you want to get access to the asset library, exclusive videos and content, and have a separate giveaway draw then consider joining my coffee membership today in the description below. But as always, keep learning until you game over. Peace.